Ready. Time doesn't matter here, but you know the Chinese guy there at the, at the back, Bing Yu Yang, even had her arms crossed when she skated away. Time doesn't count, it's only whoever finishes first. The first of the 16 laps, you could call an empty lap, it doesn't really count. You're not allowed to place any attacks, it's just to get everyone skating, a bit of the speed. And then after that, you get another start signal, and then it really, really starts. Currently, in the front, Valerie Malte, the golden cap. Behind that, Irene Schouten. And then Mia Manginello behind that. Very often, much more so than the men's, the women's mass start ends in a mass sprint. Although Schouten and Groenewoud have managed to uh, skate away, get a big lead and stay away a few times. One of them. The reason they are so strong is that they both have can uh, keep at it for a very, very long time. They're both great distance skaters. But they also are two of the fastest sprinters of the field. And it's rare that someone can do it both. It's even rarer that you have two in the same country who work together who can both do it both. Speed's going up a little bit here. And there goes Kusova. And the two Swiss skaters as well. Within the lead there, uh, Ramona Herdy now, behind that McGregor. They're skating for the sprint points. Herdy still in the lead, McGregor behind, then Kulsova. And uh, the two Swiss are first and second, and Ulrich. German skater also got one point. And there's uh, quite a big gap now. More than 100 meters between this uh, group of seven and the other nine. This group of seven has McGregor, Herdy, Ulrich, Kurseva. Um, well, let me see it again. Tas. And I saw one of the Americans there and one of the Polish skaters. I see who, haven't been able to read the cap number. Okay, and Groenewoud is leading the chase now. There's another gap here between the first five and the, the other four. a difference of uh, almost 200 meters between the head group, the group in the lead and these five. That's a big difference. If they work together well, not seeing them currently, so I don't know how well they are working together. Here they are. That's uh, Berkeland for the Americans there. And for Poland, that's uh, Cichon. He's John in the lead now, and they're going quite fast. They have, they can see the four in the back there. And it's about half a lap difference between the five that are uh, led by Grunewald, that are in chase. Well, those nine have uh, caught up back together again. And the difference is getting bigger. They've almost caught up. The seven in the front have almost caught up to the other nine. And if that happens, if you get lapped, you're out. If you don't stop after you get lapped, you will get disqualified. Almost the entire field got disqualified in one of the World Cups because they didn't get out. Or maybe that was the European Championship, I'm not sure. Either way, somewhere that happened. 
this season. So once, if this group ever comes really close, then the other nine will have to accelerate, and they most likely will. They will have the energy for that. Difference, uh, the gap is well, either increasing or decreasing, depends on at which gap you look. Their lead is slightly decreasing anyway. This is the gap in chase, this is the, the pack in front. What's interesting is that neither of the Canadians and neither of the Dutch skaters, and also not Manginello, are in here. And those are five of the top six in the World Cup standings. The only one of the top six who is here is Sandrine Tas. Cap number five. And we have just a few laps to go. And the gap is still more than half a lap. I don't think it's possible for the chasers anymore to, to keep up, especially uh, to catch up, especially if they go this fast for the sprint lap here. I think. Yes. So we've got 12 laps now, four more to go. There's Tishton with the sprint lap points. And now it's a question of going to the finish. And seeing who can win the sprint. Unless something miraculous happens with this pack, but they're not going very fast. So at the moment they're not gaining. Maybe they're all skating very defensively just for the World Cup win. And that's why they don't really care about this individual distance. Ooh, the pack has almost caught up again. The leading pack, which is this pack, is uh, they're all waiting to see what happens, who's going to be in front. You don't really want to be in front yet. You want to be a little bit further in the back so that you're out of the wind. And then take a sprint past everyone near the end. It's usually what people do. Come from the back. You can see them all waiting, sensing. Speed goes up now. McGregor in the lead. And there comes Herdy. Herdy in the lead now. One more lap to go. Tas behind Herdy and Ulrich behind that. Tas on the inside now, leading the sprint. Herdy behind. Ulrich behind that. Oh, crash from Berkeland. Is it Tas or Ulrich? It is Tas. And it is also still. I believe that was Herdy into second place. Oh, it was Lola Bridget who fell. Wait, she was in the pack behind. She also fell. And Schouten wins the sprint of the rest. That was a very chaotic mass start. Something happened there in the pack behind. Because one of the Canadians there threw her, threw her arms up. What an interesting race this was. At one point, we had three different packs, seven in front, five chasing and four behind that. Those five and four came together again. And then in the final two laps, something happened with there. Lola Brigida fell. There was a massive gap between all of them. Schouten won the sprint of those with a massive lead. Either way, Tas won the mass start, which is by far her best result. And as you see, crazy things can happen a pack with neither of the Canadians and neither of the Dutch skaters. I'd never expect that to happen, but it happened. They got away.